Good morning, everybody. Now, I don't know about you, but I love the sun. I love warm days when the sun is shining. On the sunny days, everyone is outside playing sports, exercising, or simply just enjoying the weather. The sun is proven to have a positive effect on our well-being as people. A friend of mine from Florida even told me that there was once a study done that showed the overall friendliness of a given city is linked directly to how much sun the city gets throughout the year. The sunnier the city, the nicer its citizens seem to be. And my favorite thing about the sun is when you go to Greece, the people tell you that the sun has healing abilities. If you are feeling under the weather, local Greeks will tell you to go to the beach. Nakanis ligo iliotherapia. That is, to do some sunbathing. The word itself for sunbathing in Greek, iliotherapia, literally means sun therapy. So yes, the sun is amazing, but interestingly enough, I never really thought twice about the sun or seemed to even care about it until I lived without it. During my four years while living in Boston, I rarely saw the sun. During a harsh winter year, sometimes we could go eight whole months without seeing the sun in Boston. Imagine eight months of darkness and dimness. Instead of that wonderful blue color in the sky, the sky had a depressing gray tint for eight months out of the year. And only after experiencing a period of time without the sun did I realize how important the sun is and I realized how I would never want to live without it again. In today's Gospel passage, we hear an Old Testament prophecy about people in areas known as Zebulun and Naphtali who lived in darkness. It says these people lived in a region under the shadow of death. But in this prophecy, it says that one day these people in darkness will see a great light and that in their region under the shadow of death a light will dawn and that prophecy is fulfilled today when Jesus Christ arrives to these areas in other words Jesus Christ is the light now this is a very important theme in our faith in fact it is with this theme of Christ as light in mind, that our churches are designed. Our churches always face east, the direction where the sun rises from. Windows are also a very important element in Orthodox churches, designed to let in only light and nothing else such as views that might be distracting. Churches try to maximize the amount of natural light with their windows so that we need as little artificial light as possible. This is why our new cathedral building has a, total, has a total of 135 windows. And I know that for a fact because Father Stephen and I counted them ourselves this morning, each window. And of course, in addition to windows in our churches, we have plenty of candles and oil lamps that are also used to illuminate the saints and sacred events depicted in icons. Light is very important to us as Orthodox Christians. We also have many references to light and brightness, not only in our churches, but in our services as well. Just before the Gospel, we hear Father Stephen say the prayer, Shine within our hearts, loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our mind to comprehend your gospel. And during the creed, which we all recite, we call Christ 
Fos ek fotos, which means light of true light. And on the most important day of the year, during the midnight liturgy on Pascha, we hear the beautiful gospel passage from the first chapter of John when he talks to us about God in this way. It says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Jesus Christ is the true light that gives light to each one of us. So we see we have a constant source of light in our lives. No matter, how dark, no matter how dark things seem to be, we have hope in Jesus Christ that brings us light. Like the sun that makes plants grow, like the sun that heals us in Greece, Jesus Christ shines in our life when nothing else does. Now this year has been particularly dark, of course, from COVID to the fires, political turmoil that has been raging, you name it. Yet we fixate on these things and wonder why we feel so weighed down, why we feel such darkness around us. These problems are actually similar to the problems that ran rampant during the time of Christ. Plagues, natural disasters, corrupt political movements, and just like Christ came as the Son of Righteousness, as we call him, to bring healing to the world back then, we have our faith in him to bring healing to us today. Throughout the year, we have many feast days on the calendar of our church. The biggest feast day, of course, is Pascha or Easter, but we have many other feast days like Christmas and Epiphany, which we just celebrated recently, and the important thing about these feasts is to remember that when we celebrate them, we celebrate them in the spirit that they are happening right now. We are not simply commemorating a historical event from thousands of years ago. We celebrate a feast day like they happen currently, today. They are just as important each year on their day of celebration as they were on the original days that they happened. So all throughout the year, we have joyous events to celebrate in the church. Events from the life of Christ, the life of the Theotokos, and the saints of the church who many of you are named after. All these wonderful days are being celebrated throughout the year. So when the world gives us hardship after hardship, depressing event after depressing event, bad news after bad news, the church gives us reasons for joy. The church, for us, is a source of happiness. Jesus Christ and his church shed light into our lives that can become so darkened by what goes on around us. But I don't have to tell you about the positive effects of this light. Each one of you watching today knows this. There is a reason you choose to connect with your church even virtually after so much time apart. Now, I'm sure many of you received your cathedral ad book in the mail recently, which so many of you participated in by sending your pictures. And as I flipped through the book myself, I couldn't help but smile as I saw so many happy pictures of all your families and many past events. And the ads submitted in memorial of the people who have passed away, I found particularly heartwarming. As I flipped through the book, I thought, here is a group of hundreds and hundreds of people, all connected and invested in one another's lives, a group of people and a community that would have never existed if it weren't for the light of Jesus Christ. This is the power the light of Christ has, a power to unite people when the world keeps trying to tear itself apart. We see what a world without Christ looks like. 
All we have to do is flip on the TV for another depressing installment of the news. But to see a world with Christ, instead crack open your cathedral ad book. See the smiling faces of the people you haven't been able to see in person for so long. And have faith that by the grace of God, we will all be back here again in this cathedral, facing east towards the sun, under the 135 windows of the new cathedral, happily together in the light of Christ again. Amen.